Hi there, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Kevin, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey there, my name's Evan. I'm a dumb dad. Cheers. Cheers, pal. Back in the office. Little, back in the office. Back in the States, as they'd say. Back in the States. I yeah. mean, we didn't leave the States. No, we didn't. Uh, but we went on an expedition with our families. I think it's important to note that people, I think a lot of people know we don't um, post our children on our social media. So Mostly because they can't act. I mean, I've... The line reads are bad. They're in most of my videos, but then they end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. And I have to work around a lot of stuff. A <laughs> lot of editing. <laughs> Lots of editing. And people do ask sometimes, do you guys really have kids? Uh-huh. Which is like a valid question because there's weird people For on sure. the internet. who is For like, Because sure. there actually have been... Hold on, uh, I said, there's weird people on the internet. I don't want to judge. Um <laughs> But, but you validated people, that there's real people. I've seen people use a toothbrush and soap on a microphone <laughs> and they find that calming. <laughs> anyway, it's a way to get locked on to one video for 25. Well, there was questions. one guy on TikTok that someone figured out he doesn't have kids and he was making parenting content. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. People really liked him and followed his stuff. Anyway, the only reason I'm saying that is because we went to Disney World. Can you believe it? We went to Disney. It doesn't even feel like in some ways that that happened. Sure. When there's like a big trip like that, leading up to the trip, it didn't feel real. Because yeah. it's just such a, it's it's such a and it's such an escape from real normal life that you're going to go across the country and do this big thing. Mm-hmm. I know we were very excited about it. Yeah. But at the same time it just feels, you know, as it gets closer and closer and you're thinking like, man, I can't believe tomorrow we're going to be like across the country, you know. And then we're there, and it's a whirlwind of activity. And then we come back, and it's like real life, boom, back to real life. Yep. And it sometimes feels like, man, I can't believe that happened. You know? Yeah. We'll get we'll get into the, we'll get the into coming the, back. Yeah. But, but we uh, went, and we went with our yeah. families, um, and we made a lot of stories and stuff. And it was funny because people were like, "You went to Disney World without your families." <laughs> Because it did look like it. Yeah. Anyway, so we were we were invited and hosted by uh, this company, Undercover Tourist. We're yep. very lucky to be brought out there by them and by Disney. It was a fun, a fun and wild experience. Let's just get right into it. So we Let's just dive right in, man. Like f- flying the Florida on a red eye. So we went to Disney World. We were invited to go there, and we go, and uh, kids get out of school on Wednesday, and. I would love to know what your your experience was. So we had very low expectations for the reveal. We've seen the videos go poorly of telling your kids they're going to Disney World. Yeah. And we were fully prepared for that. Fully prepared for that. And da- my son gets out of school. No, we're not going to tell him. We're going to wait till because he, he gets out at noon and my daughter's going to get out at 2.30. Now, again, you're going to tell them the day of, which day we did of. as well. Day the of. day of. Tonight we are doing this. Yeah. yeah. So she gets out of school. We're going straight home. We're not going to do a play date or nothing where you can catch that last minute cold. <laughs> <laughs> We're going right into a bubble. Yep. So she gets out of school. We go home. And I found a video online of like, I don't know, the Disney World experience. And it's just like, it's very much an ad uh basically for disney world so mm-hmm. it's just a lot of glitz and glamour mm-hmm. and all these beautiful hd shots like a trailer a trailer it's for like that it's like yeah. a trailer for the park so i showed my daughter and my son showed them the video they watch it and i go that is disney world and she was like yeah that looks awesome and i was like it'd be a pretty cool place you probably want to go huh <laughs> <laughs> you know you're kind of like Trying to build it up. And she's like, see this? This yeah. is cheese. Yeah. You like cheese? Because I'm going to hide it yeah. at the end of this maze. Yeah. You like cheese, right? Cheese is good? Keep keep, keep that smell in your nose. Now, so <laughs> she, so she's like, yeah, I would. And I was like, well, guess what? We're going tonight uh-huh. to Disney World. Yep. And she's like, tonight? Everybody stand back for the reaction. Yeah. We're going tonight. You're uh-huh. not going to school tomorrow. We're going to get on a plane tonight and fly to Florida. And she was like, I have school tomorrow. <laughs> you monster parent. And we were like, you want to say, who cares? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess you're not really there yet. Although what's funny is like your daughter has seems to have been there during first grade. Like I don't like school. Well, that's the funny thing. So she goes back and forth. She doesn't like school. She still doesn't. Yeah. She's good at school. She does the assignments and all that stuff. Yeah. I think, you know, it's just a nuisance to her. Like sitting down and going over this stuff is annoying for her. A nuisance in between getting up and playing all day. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Before that, that was her schedule. Yeah. Five and a half years. As much straight years of as, like- as you want. <laughs> and now it's like, what's an octagon? And she's like, what are we doing? Who cares? Who cares? My dad knows that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know I that. Think. My mom and dad know that. So we tell her that. So she gets worried. I think she gets worried as like, I'm going to get in trouble. Do you think this is an early, and we're, we're sort of getting into this a little bit, this is an early reveal as to whether or not she's a surprise person. For instance, my wife, not into surprises. Doesn't like surprises. No, not really. Okay. I can kind of roll with it a little bit, you know? Improv background, yes and, what are we doing? Okay, cool, I'll just adjust my other plans. We'll go with it. Maybe it's an adult thing, but my wife does not like surprises really. Okay. But I wonder if that's an early interpretation of a kid going like, I have school tomorrow. What do, no, I can't do that. Well, that I already a, have plans for tomorrow. I already have plans tomorrow. Well, I think we're starting to learn how she gets overwhelmed. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's when you start to get pushback. So we got pushback of being sure. like, I have school tomorrow. And we were like, yeah, you're just not going. Uh, <laughs> just like, who cares? Like, you don't want to say who cares about school, but you're also just like, who cares? We're going to Disney World. Again, we weren't disappointed by this reaction. This is fully what we were expecting. Did you film it? Yeah, of course we did. <laughs> um, of course we did. We're not fools. Yeah. I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. Yeah. We would hit record I was hit like, the, and hit the phone. I was like, you don't have to go to school. We're going to send a letter to the school saying you're not going. Uh, and it'll be fine. And she was like, yeah. She got excited about that. She got excited yeah. about it's okay that I don't have to go to school. So she was more worried about getting in trouble. And then we said to her, this didn't go anywhere, but it, you could tell it might have where we said, great. So we're going to. We already packed everything. We have your suitcase, which we know you wanted to pack. We set aside the clothes that you're going to wear. You can maybe grab one or two things, but we, no, you, but you can pack your bag. Kind of thing. At this point in the conversation in the video, how long has it been before your son lost interest and left the room? He's there. He's just, he's, he's like, there's a lot of emotions going on. I'm here for it. And then I was like, so we're going to drop uh, Blaney is our dog. I'm going to drop Laney off at Auntie Uncle's. Uh-huh. He's going to stay with them. She starts to well up. She doesn't start to cry. But she goes, Blaney's not coming? And I was like, get out of here. You don't... You know what? You don't get it. You, you know what? Appreciate I'm going to go. Man, I'm going to take all the fun pictures. And I'm going to get drunk with Mickey Mouse. And <laughs> we're going to call oh, you at God, 3 in the morning. Man. I want to go get, go get drunk with Goofy. Yeah. <laughs> Goofy is drunk. Um <laughs> He gets drunk and he becomes like very sophisticated, but it was just funny because then she started to get upset, which we quickly squashed of like she was upset the dog wasn't coming. And I was like, you're just overwhelmed emotionally. <laughs> you're just trying to pick something. It's a lot to process. To, they, yeah. She doesn't know like what's happening. I mean, she doesn't know really what Disney World is. Exactly. I mean, that's we showed the thing, her a like, video and it was like, she doesn't know what that is. Cool. She didn't know she was about to get on a long flight. No, she's been to Disneyland. Yeah, but she was like three or four. Right. So... There's a fleeting memory of even what that is. Yeah. She was right. Three. So, she was three my son was born. Right. So, uh, the point is, we were same thing. We told our children the day of, essentially, when yeah. when the uh, my son got home from school, we like sat him down. We have something to tell you. The thing was, and I know that our both of our families were were <laughs> toying with this idea. Like, I mean, we've known for weeks. Right, working yeah. with undercover tourists and and going through the process and like and, and what it's going to be like and all you know all the details ironing out the details. But knowing all this ahead of time, it's like I can't really. The idea was, we're so excited to go and yeah. be a part of this um, community, the Frog Hop. Uh, what yeah, for they, those what who they don't call it with for uh, those who don't tourists. know, this isn't like a paid podcast, uh, paid ad for the podcast. But we'll just say Undercover Tourist is a website where you can buy theme park tickets and hotels and rental cars for like 500 different theme parks throughout the whole country. Yeah, at discounted prices. I mean, now we prices. did partner with so them. So that is why we partnered with them. Yeah. And it was great. It's a great partnership. Um, but then they part of it was they were flying us to this big uh, influencer gathering at Disney World and invited yeah. us there. They're also known as Theme Park Frogs. 
same exact tickets you can normally get to the theme parks and everything at a discounted price, right. which is great geared towards families that are trying to do a trip like this and don't know how to plan it all together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, which is extremely overwhelming. It's just as overwhelming for the adults yes. and, or the families as it is for anybody else. Like, how do I even do this? Um, all that to say, we were like, we're not going to tell them when we knew it was happening. Like, so we knew like, whatever, like a month out, your but it's more sanity. for your own sanity that you're like, we're going to go to Disney world. What's that? Why are we going? When are we going? How many days? How many days? How many days? Yep. Like, so we're just like avoiding all that yep. just because normal life, life has to happen weeks leading up to it. So we thought like, well, it would be more fun to tell them the day of. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the night before the day we decided the day of. Yeah. Same thing though. My son definitely was excited filmed the thing he screamed in excitement which upset my daughter because it was too loud too loud of a reaction so she cried yeah. and then essentially calming down telling we're going to basically mickey mouse's house you know we're going to go hang out with them and all, yeah. their, all their buddies and we're going to go and then it's like you know pitch it to it's a pitch meeting right to your <laughs> to yeah. your son you and your daughter it. like we're going to go see elsa and uh and uh, anna and um all the people from Encanto. And uh, you know all the movies that they love, yeah. and that you know Buzz Lightyear. You know it's like how do you pitch it to them to get them right. excited? So it was super fun. It was a really funny reaction. Like they were, they don't. At the same time, no matter how you say it, they're not really going to get it. It's a right. big deal. It's right. a very very big deal for many people, and who knows? It's like basically a once in a lifetime trip. Depending on how far away you are, I mean, we're got to fly across the country to do this kind of thing. Yeah. So we set off on, and what we decided, the best way to do this was to take a red eye. <laughs> yeah, we took a red eye. We took a red eye. We left on the Wednesday evening. Our flight left at like, I don't know, eight o'clock. Yeah. Pacific time. And here's the thing. We're going under the assumption that like, we're going to be, you and I are going to be kind of working a little bit at the same time, at, at like partially working, um, going to hangouts and meet and greets and and like this kind of stuff with like the with the uh, the frog hop group, mm -hmm. and then and then when it's over like those meetings are over we're gonna go spend time with our families. So twofold. One is like before we even get too far into this, massive credit to our wives who were essential in planning details of like the trip and like how it was going to go. And we mm -hmm. sort of knew we had an itinerary of where we were going to be at certain times. And so then they planned their days around like which parks they were going to be. They correlated with our schedule. At correlated the time with our schedule. So when so, we got out, we could meet up with yeah, them. It wasn't, it wasn't like a 45 yeah. minute bus ride to go hang out with them somewhere. So like that super essential and, and doing all that. And on top of that, like them taking all four kids yeah, huge. Just shout the out. two of them, like massive zone coverage situation on their part. Yeah. <laughs> so huge shout out and credit to them for for handling that, so that we could then meet up and then volunteer to push the stroller and do whatever we could do to try to make up for lost time. So I took a red eye when I flew to Ireland. I mean, God, a lifetime ago, uh -huh. twenty plus years ago, twenty uh -huh. at least twenty. Oh, just boy, Kevin, boyhood, Kevin, at least twenty five years ago. Uh huh. Which I throw up in my mouth when I say <laughs> twenty five years ago. Just don't get it on the microphone. It's wild. I don't like that kind of stuff. But here we are. Twenty five years ago, I did an adult thing. Yeah, and I remember it. And I, well, yeah, <laughs> I remember. I, mean, it. I was definitely a kid, but um, <laughs> so you only had so much Guinness and so that's uh, the only Jameson, time you're saying. Uh, that's the only time I remember. I only I did a red eye. Never really done one since. I've done. Yeah, I don't know that I've done one. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I flew to Paris before, but I mean that takes like five days. So like, who knows? It was two, it was, two red eyes. So I will say this. So people, when we told people we did a red eye, uh, we don't want to go into. We want to make this an eight-hour podcast, given every detail. But I will talk about the red eye. Somebody was like, "How did the kids do?" And what was good about it was well, how we handled it. I think so. I, th I felt pretty comfortable with that. Which was the kids slept some, I slept none, and well, and each adult took a kid. Each adult took a kid. So it was like and two and two and two and two, two and two and two two. Yeah. And it was like have that kid sleep on you, whatever way possible. You try to sleep too. I tried to sleep. I eventually gave up, and then your body's so tired because it is the middle of the night. Yeah. And then you land. We landed at five in the morning, uh, Florida time. It's really two in the morning for us um, <laughs> on the West Coast. 
So it's five in the morning. We take a bus ride. I don't remember if the kids were asleep, but not a bus ride. Like we took a big van uh, for like about 45 minutes to the hotel. So once we get to the hotel, it's like, all right, let's go. It's go time. Like, let's get dressed. Let's My get favorite refreshed. part is that we go up to the front desk, like in the app, you know, it's like you might be able to check in before three, but essentially three o'clock p.m. is check-in and we want to well saunter up to the desk like by any chances are room ready <laughs> yeah <'cause laughs> the, we'll never know it's in them in the multiverse we got the room early yeah. but yeah. in this universe we did not and the room was not ready <laughs> at all not no. even close no it was ready at 255 yeah <laughs> But so we just like we all got changed, refreshed in the you know bathroom and lo- bathroom lobby, yeah. lobby bathroom, and then we got ready to go, put our stuff in bellhop, and I was like, let's go. By this time, with the driving and everything, now the park's open, and we shoot over to Epcot, and now it's just like, all right, we're moving and we're going, and the kids were moving and going, and yeah. it was in a doing way doing better than I thought they were gonna do. So I will say this as like, a, it's not even a, just a tip because every kid is different. So I don't know how your listeners, the families, kids would react. But I will say it worked out for us. Granted, the kids were, we weren't uh, there for, we didn't get a bad report about the first night, but the kids were run ragged and they were destroyed by the end of the night. Yeah. And, but it was a good thing to do because it destroyed the potential for jet lag for the whole trip. I think so. Because keeping them up for almost 48 hours. <laughs> First of all, you can get your kids taken away for doing that. <laughs> not highly recommended. I recommend it. And it was it was like not the easiest day, but not a hard day. It wasn't a terrible day. But what was great about it was kids went to bed that night. Kids fell asleep. Kids. Eight, nine or something. Uh, and then they got their sleep. So now they're on Florida time. And there's no jet lag because it was like you were up for an impossible amount of time with this weird three hour nap where it was normally bedtime that when you did go to bed, it was like, okay, this is my new bedtime. You already feel like an alien. Yeah. I mean, it's so, the, so that was the thing nice. was like, of course, you and I have different schedules. So when everyone's like, we go wind down, I remember going, I, we get there, we hit the park for a while, a few hours. And it's like, man, we were just going hard. It's like fumes. We, what do we do? We like got coffee in the lobby and then yeah. go to the park. Yeah, and then we're busy, we're busy, we're busy, and it's like, man, I don't even know the last time I ate. I am on coffee fumes. Like, I am the I'm the car. I felt like your car when you've been on empty for fifteen miles. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't really know how the car is still going, but you're looking for a gas station, and you're still going, and you're still going. That that's what it felt like. And then it was like, okay, let's go back to the hotel and chill for a while, relax decompress the kiddos can take a nap force them to take a nap yeah so that we can go back out again later and then we'll hit the you know and then they you know whatever try to make it a normal day ish yeah. but you and i were like i literally was like back to the hotel thinking like yeah i'm the kids i'm gonna take a nap i'm gonna lay down so because we have a dinner tonight we have a meetup tonight and yeah we did take a nap and then you t- <laughs> i'm like i'm like peeling my socks off that i've been wearing for, f- for god knows how long yeah. on the plane and all these things and Sitting on the edge of the bed going, I'm just going to lay down for a little bit. And you text me like, hey, reminder, we got to go downstairs right now and get our credentials and meet everybody. I was like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like, okay, never mind. The kids are going to go down. I might have to leave. <laughs> I got to leave and go get our stuff. Yeah, it was. Uh... It, we were nonstop for you and I were nonstop for quite a while at the beginning of it. Yeah, but it was super fun. I mean, we got to do so many cool things, you know. And the kids did pretty well, all things considered. There was each kid, <laughs> respectfully in their own moment, had a decent meltdown at one point because it was like, my, I'm so tired. I know how to, don't know how to oh, think. Yeah. It's hot. It's wet, hot. It's Florida. It's Florida. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the wet heat versus the dry heat, which is a thing. You and I both agreed. It is a thing, and it is the difference of in the shade versus in the sun. In L.A., I mean, it's 15 degrees. In uh, Florida, it's all terrible. It's all terrible, and it just <laughs> felt like so many so many parts of the day I looked over at you, and you looked over at me, and we'd only been in the park for an hour, and we're both just like sweating profusely, just sweating. 
I'll tell you this, you know, not to be too graphic. I did not. I brought extra underwear. Didn't bring enough. No. <laughs> it's never enough. <laughs> never enough. My underwear was like those Listerine strips that you put on your dog. Okay. <laughs> It just disappears it after a while. Kind of me- First, it's like a melt, and you're like, ah, how do I get this? Yeah, oh, you it's get gone. Back. It's, it's <laughs> you gone get, forever. You get back home to the hotel to yeah. shower and change. You just yeah. have a waistband underneath your yeah. pants. It's like Thanos snapped everyone's underwear. <laughs> what was your fa- What was your favorite ride? Let's just do this. Like simple stuff. What was your favorite ride? Okay, so here's the thing. Here's where I'm going to give like kind of the sappy-ish answer. Because okay. my favorite ride was undoubtedly Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Destroyed. Cosmic Rewind. Wow. So good, amazing, like without doubt the most fun. Um, but like experience, like experiences where I had the most fun. It was a tie between. No, I'll, here's what I know. First place would be Guardians, but it's in its own category. Yeah, and then third place would be uh, Frozen. It was a Frozen ride. The Frozen ride was great. That was really fun and. Obviously, and it was a good ride too. It was honestly a good. It ride. was a good ride, but it was yeah. a good ride mainly. It was a good ride in general, but it was a good kids ride. But it was a good ride because I, I loved seeing my kids were pumped about it. Like even my son was into it. Not that he's not into Frozen. He does like Frozen, but he's not like he wasn't enamored like my daughter used to be. Yeah. So she's like my daughter doesn't care as much about Frozen anymore, but still loves the characters. So like she was like totally pumped about the ride. So that was fun. My favorite. My daughter's on that ride waving goodbye to Elsa yeah. as you go like. Goodbye, Elsa. Yeah. Goodbye. Like, oh man. So then um the other one was uh the Star Wars one, I don't know what it's called, where you were flying the Millennium Falcon. You're, yeah, the Millennium Falcon, yeah. Uh that one was my favorite because it's a six person ride. Uh huh. It was uh two engineers, two pilots, and two gunners. And I was so grateful this other couple that had been on the ride before today we happily took the engineer spot, which is in the back. So there's two pilots up in the front, two people sit behind them. Those are the gunners and two people in the back. Everybody kind of has their own individual um, job job on the ride. Yeah. So I'm sitting uh, the way it all works out. What my daughter wants is she wants to be with me and she wants to be a gunner. And I'm like, let's do it. I'm all for that. Let's blow yeah. some stuff but up. Yeah. But that's a button masher role. Is button what that masher. Is. Yeah. Yeah, let's go to Mario. How good are you at Mario Party? Let's see. That's <laughs> <laughs> a quick, quick uh, reaction, yeah. wrist reaction. How fast can you? <laughs> so my wife and my son were the pilots, and it was, I mean, I was belly laughing start yeah. to finish because my son is four, and he is flying a spaceship. And your <laughs> wife had said, we looked it up, your wife had said that you don't actually fly the thing you do. You are actually flying it. It's on a trajectory. You do so and you don't. You it's can't like, crash it. Yeah. So yeah, it does yeah. depend how much you're. It's going to get to the destination, but you could do it dragging the nose across the ground the entire. Exactly. Way. I think that's what she meant. Is like you get. It's yeah. It's not just going to crash and like okay, everybody off. Right. <laughs> oh man, that's because then everybody just flies open world and they all turn left. But right, exactly. It was on a path. But there is a way that you can get a score or yes. like a, an you're accuracy number. Worse. If you yeah yeah. So. Uh, watching my son and my wife flying while my daughter and I are button smashing, blowing stuff up was so funny. Uh, my son was so dialed in. I was worried he was going to get overwhelmed and scared. He didn't. He was. He knew this was too important. He knew he couldn't fail. The 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 rebellion. He had to help them. Yeah. The best way he knew how. Restless nights for the next month of of his sleep. But yeah, he was yeah. dialed in. Yeah. Trauma. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He'll bear the weight of the responsibility the for the next month. But My son knows nothing about Star Wars. And he was like, I'm trying to convince him that Chewbacca is not a bad guy. Like before we got on the oh, yeah. ride. He's just like the Whoa. greatest character uh, uh, in the cinematic universe yeah. of Star Wars is not a bad guy, but he is. He's, he's like, that is a bad. really sharp tooth to, uh, standing dog. He's and more loyal he than your own dog. Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, those were my those were mine. What were yours? I same thing. The Guardians of the Galaxy ride was like on a different level of ride. Um, it's basically like Space Mountain on steroids. It's still in the dark, and there's stars. But they were like, you know, I think we could also send you backwards at a hundred miles an hour. You could go sideways a hundred miles an hour, and I don't know. Let's just. Let's take the action set Pump. piece of a third act of a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yeah. 
push it down to three minutes, and you also will be watching that while on like while on this ride. While on the ride, and you know what? Cherry on top. Let's just pump some '80s music behind it. Yeah. So you just feel like, take me now. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this. Super fun. That was the ride, but I mean. To be honest, I'm I'm right there with you, man. The sappy answer, but the truthful answer is just, which is the reason that we decided to bring our families with us on this experience. Oh, was just getting to watch them experience. We would not be going if we didn't bring our families. I mean, we could have. We would have been like we would have been goofy the whole time. It would have. But, you said Back to the Future. It would have been like Back to the Future, where like we came back and it's a different house entirely. Like, yeah, <laughs> their families would have been gone. Yeah. So, but getting to watch them just experience everything from character meet and greets to rides that spoke to them on a storytelling level or a nostalgic level, in a sense that they would like loved a movie or something. Yeah. Toy Story rides or whatever it was. Yeah was worth every moment of frustration and you know things that we dealt with as the parents yeah piling on the responsibility of what the week meant to us so like that was my favorite part about it was just anytime the kids just looked at something and were like i can't believe that just happened you know like yeah for instance we go into the frozen sing along theater experience no, we have two little girls, man. We've seen Frozen like a thousand times. Yeah. We've done sing-alongs in the car a thousand times. We've played the soundtrack at home a thousand times. We've done it all, uh-huh. seen it all, been it all. And now we're going to go into the theater experience, which is sort of like a short, shortened storytelling of the movie Frozen, which we already know. Yeah. Not a single person in there got a surprise. Right. And it's like this new these couple new characters that are sort of giving you like the like the elevator pitch version of the movies and then we take a break to watch parts of the movies where the song is being played yep. and it's like a 500 person karaoke because the words are going across the screen and we're all singing, which yeah. is like no offense, the last thing I would sign up for. <laughs> But when we look over at our little girls and their jaws are in their laps because Anna and Elsa are on stage yeah. singing along with everybody, I would do that again a hundred times in a row tomorrow. And then Elsa shows up and she's like, you know what? Fuck it. Here's some ice. Here's some ice. And how about this? It's snowing in here now. Yeah. And she you know, does a couple hand moves and the whole room gets whatever it is, like little bubbles, but it looks like it's snowing. Yeah. And then it's just like, she made it snow. How did she do that? What is happening? You are you have snow on your hair, Dad. Like that experience to me was worth everything. It was so fun. I would not do it 100 times. 99? No, I do it. You do it once, quality, <laughs> quality over quantity. And, and then you do it once them, and something you tell them, she, you know, that, that's the, that was the last show ever. We caught the last one. That's crazy. <laughs> How lucky are we? Um, so all that to say that that really truthfully was like the best part about all of it was just watching your kids experience like. Well, that's why you go fun times a thousand. You know? That's why you go. We were lucky enough to get to go on like the Guardians ride. But I mean, it was fun uh, to go uh, and, and just like whatever the kids want to do. What what do you guys want to do? Whatever the kids want to do. Like yeah. obviously, our wives had plans of like we're gonna go here and do this, but I just mean like, do you want to go on this ride? I did force my kids to go on a roller coaster. Let's get to the part everybody wants to hear: the dumb dad moments. There's no yeah. way this went smoothly. We got a couple of. There's no out. way. There's there's I mean, <laughs> there were plenty. One that was not a dumb dad moment was my son. Uh, we were walking by. I know my daughter had a bad experience with a roller coaster at Legoland. So she's a little scared of him. I somehow wasn't even really trying, convinced my son to want to go on this goofy roller coaster ride. Yeah. Now, looking at the goofy roller coaster ride, passing it was like, that's not a gnarly roller coaster. But that's not the point. You don't well, know just what, saying, how like, the kids it, are going to respond. For sure, for to sure. It. But it's not like we're taking them on screaming and going upside down. It was like, yeah, no, that, look, that looks like a kind of a quick little listen, jaunt the, around Goofy's Playland. That's great. Hey, I think the same thing about the fucking car wash. And apparently, <laughs> that thing's a goddamn nightmare. 
So you can't judge a roller coaster by how it looks. I don't mean necessarily from the kid's point of view. I just mean, look, it's not a gnarly roller coaster from the adult's perspective. From the adult's perspective. It's not a gnarly roller coaster. But no. you're thinking like, eh, my, my kids can maybe go I on. somehow get my son pumped about wanting to do it. And I know there's a voice in the back of my head that's like, this probably isn't. This might not be a good idea. Great. And then my daughter's like, I want to go because she's in just like, she was in a pretty good mood at this moment. She was really excited to be there. Just like, and she was like, I want to do that. And I was like, you want to, both of you want to go. And my wife doesn't like roller coasters. Even Your that. wife doesn't like a gnarly car ride. Yeah. So, a, so she's not a coming. roller coaster she's period is like, why are we doing that? Why so would anybody do that? I just said to my wife, I was like, I'm going to take them. They want to go. And she was like, I don't think this is a good idea. She said it. She was like, I don't like this idea. And I was like, here's the thing. They're either going to hate it and then it'll be over and then we'll buy them another sugary thing. And they'll spend the... <laughs> That's how you solve they'll their spend, problems. They'll still spend the next three days telling me, remember when you put me on that horrible ride and it ruined everything? Yeah. And, and then, then forced me to eat sugar and I was up for all, all kinds of hours. But similar to the Disney reveal of like, this isn't going to go well and I'm fine with whatever happens. Mm -hmm. That was my plan with the roller coaster. I didn't think it wasn't going to go well. I was like, this is a coin toss. <laughs> they had a blast. It's they like, loved no, the ride. you're willing to, I think maybe it's like part of it is like your wife's, like the willing, your willingness to keep it as a coin toss was part of the pushback. Cause like, why, why, if you, if it's a 50, 50 deal, why are you doing it? Which is fair because roulette is fun because the roulette is fun. And I sense that, I mean, it was kind of, you know, of course we're with each other the whole time. You have sense that your wife is like, I, I just don't see why you're trying to do this or whatever. Because every once in a while, you know, you got to do that dad thing. That is like <laughs> every, you know, your wife is going to go, why, why did you think that was going to work? Because statistically. Yeah, because maybe. Because maybe. And who knows? I don't know the next time we'll go to a theme park in general. Certainly not Disney World. Um, but in general, will they'll be around a roller coaster. But maybe that was the thing they needed to now. Now they know they can do it. Or solidify. My son said that, was that his, we won't be going to theme parks anymore. My son said that was his <laughs> favorite uh, ride. That was his favorite with yeah. the roller coaster. Now, I, again, I was going to say like, I sensed there was like a pushback from your wife, clearly, that was like, I don't know why this is a good idea. So I was like, because my wife you, had, or sorry, my daughter had a genuinely bad time. For sure. Like, totally like, valid. Totally valid. Yeah. So sensing that, it was like, okay, so I was on board with you to like, let's just make, because you basically the two wives hung back. My little daughter didn't want to go. So it was like the two of us and then the three kiddos. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, let's just make this as fun as it can possibly be. Yeah. So even when your daughter was like a couple times in line was like, I'm a little scared. And it was like, that's okay. Yeah. I know both of you and I were like, that's okay. It's cool. Like it could be scary, but you know what? It's part of what makes it fun. And then yeah. we're going to go up and down and we you know what? And I think, remember you telling her like, you know what you do when you're scared? You scream. And this is okay to do on a roller coaster. You scream because you're scared. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're having fun and you, and before we know it, we're on the ride and she has like this nervous look on her face. Yeah. And then we hit the first bank to turn at speed and her arms are up. Yeah. And it was like, I think you were sitting in front of us with her and I saw her arms go up and I was like, Oh man, this is great. Like yeah. it was like, now she's into it. And like little kids sometimes that face their fears, no matter how great they are, we're walking back through after the ride. And she's like, oh, I kind of want to do that again. Oh yeah. Which is all you need to hear. Real cocky. It's all real, you need happy. To hear. real, real cocky. <laughs> I, mean, I, I honestly, I wasn't really scared. Was I was just saying it so, like, in case anybody else felt scared. Was that on beginner level? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tutorial. Where's the rear ride? <laughs> my other, uh, my favorite dumb dad moment of the trip, and again, we had plenty of little ones, but, we, we, but to keep it short as possible, my favorite dumb dad moment was when we, this is sort of a, a joint dumb dad moment, which we kind of rarely get to have. It's, it's just an honor to work with you. It's an honor to work with you, buddy. And uh, when we were headed back from a day at the park, uh huh, we had a scheduled sort of dinner situation. Yeah, you and I had to go to uh, a dinner with uh, undercover tourists and Disney, and the rest of the family, our wives and our children, had a scheduled dinner at the same area of the park. Yeah, and in a restaurant, and it was like, okay, 
So we get back on the tram ride or the bus ride to the hotel. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> still makes me laugh. And we're like looking at our watches. It's like, I'm going to make up some numbers here. But it's like we land at 540. 5.40 p.m. Look at our watch. It's 5.40 p.m. We look at the schedule. The bus is leaving at 6.12. Oh, yeah. Which even now, saying this out loud, seems completely insane. Bus is going to be here and leaving at 6.12. We need to get upstairs. 5.40? No, that's incorrect. It was like 5.50. Yeah. 5.50, maybe 5.55. Yeah. We're like, get upstairs. Everyone jump in the shower. Rinse off the sunscreen. Put your dinner clothes on. Back down here to the bus. Uh-huh. And you know what? I don't know, man. In the moment, it felt doable. Once we all committed, the adults committed, it was like, not only is this doable, it's going to happen. Yeah. We're going to make this happen. Fast forward to upstairs, and it's like, we're so in the shower. Where's my shoes? I don't know where things are. We are at 6.10. I'm texting you going, we're headed downstairs. Yeah. We're going to make it with, with false confidence. You're texting me back going, the little one fell in the shower. Well, hold on. That's my <laughs> inception <laughs> dream within a dream. Dun dun moment within a dun dun moment. So we went to do all this and get this done in basically 15 minutes. Get upstairs shower and change an entire family in 15 minutes yeah gonna happen and with anything in life kevin you just do it with confidence i was like guys i was like guys you're gonna take a shower and my son's like i want to take a bath so i'm already you know we're going back and forth he's getting mad yeah you're already you're already losing no we're not taking a bath we're taking a shower and then i'm I'm turning on the shower while holding him he's scream crying and my daughter's great she just gets right in the shower and it was uh the hotel shower that had like the rain shower, which just like comes straight down, and then it had a hand, um, a handheld that you would just grab and turn the lever, and then it's a, a just a shower head that you can hold and mm-hmm. shower yourself. So I turned it to that and, and started spraying my daughter, just hosing her down. She's loving it. And my son's loving it, and then he's like, "I want to get it on this." So then they take it, and then they're playing with it. They're putting it on the floor of the shower, so now it's like a like a, a sprinkler? splash pad yeah. sprinkler situation where it's just. And it was actually good water pressure that it was shooting taller than them. It wasn't like hitting the ceiling or anything. I wasn't being a dick. Uh, <laughs> like a hotel patron just ruining the bathroom. But they were loving it and they were having so much fun with it. And I was like, yes, good. Have, have, because we need to go change. <laughs> have fun with that. So then I'm going and I'm getting clothes and steaming stuff. And then just like, like thud. The loudest scream. I run in there. My son's fallen on his nose. There's blood. I mean. <laughs> so you're texting me going, we had an accident. Little one fell in the shower. He's got a bloody nose. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. It maybe, was, maybe this isn't going to happen. It was like, it was a dumb dad moment because it was, <laughs> I let him basically play in a shower with like a hose. <laughs> yeah. Like go this, nuts. This slippery situation. The two of you. Soapy I'm water. not going to monitor you. Yeah. Go wild. Go wild in this shower you've never been in before and just have as much fun as possible. So he, Porcelain he, all over the place. He caught the, a, a corner uh, that just really shouldn't exist in that shower, if we're being honest. It was just like a corner. Well, we'll write a letter. That's We'll write a letter. It was like a corner for falling. Like when you looked at it, you were like, <laughs> the only reason this would be here is to kind of catch some part of your body, back of your head, elbow, something. Makes no sense. In this case, a nose. A little in this tiny, case, a tiny little, little nose. nose right underneath. And we were like, is it broken? Is it broken? Is it broken? Um, but I think he, he just cut it underneath the nose. And we eventually got him there. But we were like, this is not a great start. No, not a great start. And it's dinner time. So we're waiting at the elevators going like, down, light goes off. Down, light goes off. Down. It's like... Everyone in the hotel is taking the elevator, so it's all just taking. That was the so weird long. thing of context. You text us, we're coming down. I'm like, we have a nose situation we got to take care of, and then my wife and I are like, we're not gonna make it. We beat you guys downstairs. Yeah, we couldn't catch an elevator. Somehow we eventually got it together. Went to the same elevator system, pressed the button, got on, went down. The elevator didn't stop for you. <laughs> nope, didn't stop for us. Went right past us. So 
The dumb dad moment continues. We get downstairs. Finally, we're like rushing to the bus. We, you got, we got the, you guys got there just in enough time to wonder. It was like six fifteen instead of six twelve. It was right. Like, so it's did like, did we make it? Did we make it? Is it going to be three minutes late? Do we miss it? Are we sure what's coming? We get down there. We get like twenty five yards from meeting up with you, and my wife's like, I don't have my wallet. Perfect. Which had her cards and her room key in it and we were going to be separated so she needed to go back up and get it it was like well the bus isn't here yet maybe so rush upstairs and she's like well my wallet's inside i need you to give me my the room key and i was like great here you go so she takes off she's like running to the elevator it was like we're still hopeful maybe maybe yeah. if the bus comes and it's a couple minutes late and we're still on time we'll just like pretend to not know how to pretend use the to not how, exactly <laughs> i love you man Maybe oh, oh stroller. Anybody? Oh fo- oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a rental. We rented these strollers. Not sure how to use it. Just wasting time. Yeah, wasting. That's time. the plan. That's, That's the not plan. What happens. It's the plan. My wife texts me about three minutes later. You gave me the park ticket card. You sure did. So in the context of everything going on, rushing, not thinking, rushing, not thinking, I give her the I give her the card to get into the park. And I still have the room key. You sure do. And that was a real low point of the moment of thinking we were, of thinking we were going to get to the bus <laughs> because then it was like, oh, okay. The good news was I think we had outright missed it. I think it was on time. I think we just outright missed it. Then another it. one didn't come until like 6.30 or something. <laughs> yeah. And by that point, we'd all gone upstairs at least two more times. Yeah. Then I, like, well, I was now like, that I have time, you know yeah. what I'm thinking? We could use. Yeah. So I'm like, do you want to come back down? She's like, do I want to come back down here and then go back to the elevator and go back up and down again? No, I don't want to do that. So how about you bring me the car? And I was like, yes, that's a better idea. So I run to the elevator still with some sort of false hope, like maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. no, not even close. So I go get her. We get inside of the room and it was like, so I'll say this. We can start wrapping it up a little bit here, but let's wrap it up. I'll say this. My family travels a lot. Domestically shorthand stuff, but you guys are getting into it more. All that to say, it's one thing to travel well with your family. It's another thing to travel well with somebody else. And I think we all traveled very well together. We did. There was never like we're all arguing about something. Or we couldn't figure out something. It was like we all traveled really well together. We got along well together. We made decisions as a group well together. Just understanding that not only that it was the prioritizing the children's experience, yeah, but it was like, I mean, what are we doing here? This is this. It's ultimately this is a fun experience. So let's not make it anything other than that. Right. And when things like that happened, it was like it's easier to just default to laughing about it. I mean, so here we are. We knew we had missed the bus. Now we're all downstairs, sweating profusely in yep. our nice clothing, yep. going out to dinner, thinking yep. like, "Oh man." And it's like it's a lot easier just to laugh at it and go, "Well, that didn't go." In any way, like we thought it would here, we're thinking Wasn't like we're gonna we come wanted. back down, we're gonna make the bus. And then we did everything we could to not make the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and as frustrating as that could be, it was easier to just go like, wow, well, we really kind of didn't then we kind of fucked that up. It didn't go yeah. very well. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was funnier to like talk about it as a mistake and like and laugh about it on the bus ride to where we were eventually going, which we ultimately still made it on time anyway. Yeah, it still worked out, but so, it was wild. That's the kind of attitude I would say it helps to have on a vacation like this, Yeah, which is pressure for fun and it's expensive and you're spending all this money, but if you treat it as like a frustrating experience, then that's all it's going to be. And honestly, that's kind of how parenting is. Like, it can be a very oh, frustrating at him experience. It, up. it can be very frustrating experience. It can be very overwhelming all the time. But that's part of the antithesis of what this podcast is. Like, if you really think about it, like, well, that was dumb. And you laugh about it a little bit and learn from it, learn from your mistakes. If we were going to do this again, I'm sure we would do things differently. Yeah. But there's also not a lot of things I would change. So, no, it's other great. than my underwear, way more often. So, way more often. But it was it was so fun, man. It was just it was so fun to get to do that together as families, and I'm we we're I'm so happy to get to do it with you and our, and our, the experiences we've had together. And I was be so happy. This opportunity, it was just amazing. I was so happy to do it. I, I feel like our families went really well together, and it was a lot of fun. And 
who knows if we'll get to do that again? Disney World. Uh, I'm sure we'll be traveling again with the families, but yeah, you couldn't have asked for a better experience. Uh, and the kids, and the kids, the kids were excited and pumped. So I expect this week to be uh, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. You got to pay for it. You got to pay, pay for it. it. It was a good trip. Yeah. You Our children have already like. I mean, like your son went. We to bed had at, some. Your son went to bed at five great. o'clock yesterday. It was yeah. like the jet lag. And we'll end with this. My son went to bed at five p.m. last night. <laughs> I woke up at, s- and I was like, "All right, he's up at four. Th- he's up at three a.m. And one of us is just gonna be watching uh, Floors Lava on the TV, basically sleeping while he watches it, and he's gonna be yeah, recovering alongside of him. He woke up at six thirty a.m. He's up thirteen and a half hours. Beast. I, w- I would go- I would go to the Frozen show a hundred times more if I could just have like a five p.m. to six thirty a.m. sleep day. That sounds amazing. That so, so just sounds incredible, man. That's amazing. I'm jealous and a little bit frustrated at him for just being able to do that. Now you know my feelings towards him regularly. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel about him almost all <laughs> the time. Just like jealous of his happiness and just shut and his- frustrated that he's always climbing on me. <laughs> But guys, if you have any dumb parent experiences, especially, especially theme park experience. traveling, yeah. like send them in to us. We'd love to hear about them. Dumbdadpod at gmail.com is our email. Write in. Uh, we'd like to do a mailbag every month if we can. We're compiling some new ones for the next one. We just had a mailbag drop. So if you haven't listened to that one, it was a bonus pod last, uh, last week as of this recording. Uh, I so guess go so. check I that don't know out. what time it is or what day it is. Who, to knows, be who, knows, what time, who knows what else is going on. Uh, you can also send us your dumb parenting moments on, uh, you can DM us on Instagram. We're at the dumb dads. That's our handle at the dumb dads on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, where you can watch full episodes of this podcast. So Still waiting on like a handwritten one. Follow the podcast. Can, we have a mailbox our page. Yeah. We could send us a mail, a handwritten. We do have a handwritten, uh, you could handwrite them. It'd be weird. But, send them to our uh, mailbox and we, yep. we, could, we could show it. I would love that. You you know, there's that. a lot of ways to contact us. There's a lot of ways to get a hold of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, check all that stuff out. Rate and review the podcast if you haven't done it already. We really appreciate when you guys do that. And um, subscribe, follow, whatever it's considered now on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> is it follow now? Hit the bell. If the bell is grayed out, subscribe. I think you're good. Okay. Do that. I think that's the notification button. Oh, Hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Well, they get notified when the podcast drops, and you're not going to get notified unless you subscribe. You subscribe, it's going to whatever. If you go to my MySpace, um, Tom is so see, not gonna get, Tom's not going to get bumped off, but you, you could climb to number two. If you two. go to my MySpace, it is a video of uh, Will Ferrell doing a Neil Diamond VH1 behind the music oh. sketch. Uh, so just go to that and write in your dumb parenting moments. And if you could <laughs> tell Kevin what his password is so he could sign in and change it. No clue. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks to Ed Verdu on SoundCloud for the music to this podcast. Thanks as always Real. to my lovely wife, Annie, for editing this podcast. I for the bleeps. A, the bleeps. There's going to be some bleeps. There's going to be some bleeps. <laughs> I got a joke for you. Yeah. You ready for this? Here we yes. go. Uh, where does Captain Hook go to get his hook replaced? Where does he go to get his hook replaced? Yeah. Uh, hooks and ladders. Oh, it's close. I appreciate that. But it's the secondhand store. Oh, it's a little obvious. But we're tired. We're jet lagged. Jet so lagged. I'm not going to blame it on you. Okay. All right. I'm gonna okay. Go. I'm gonna go to bed. Okay. Let's go Bye. To bed. Bye. Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome to life. How do I stop this?